you guys spend it on your tax cuts for the rich and for your senseless, ridiculous wars? How about we get our money back? Well, either the money is spent or it's there as a surplus. One so or the other. Make you up your it. mind. The fact is that it's gone. So that was former Congressman Bob McEwen on Tuesday's show, bagging up Alan Simpson, saying that our Social Security trust fund is gone. That $2.5 trillion surplus, too bad, we already spent it, you might as well deal with it. Alan Simpson is leading President Obama's deficit commission, and he had said 310 million Americans are milking Social Security. That's like saying if you put your money into a bank, and later you want to take it out, you're milking the bank. That makes no sense. It's our money, and they had no right to spend it on, quote, other priorities. Well, now Simpson is going after a new target for his deficit commission. He's finally going to talk about cutting defense? Of course not. Or raising taxes on the super, super rich? Of course not. He goes after the most vulnerable people in the country again. This time, he says war veterans are, quote, not helping by collecting their disability benefits. Are you kidding me? So after we send them to war and ask them to sacrifice their bodies and possibly their lives for this country, they're not being helpful by collecting their disability? Simpson adds, quote, the irony is that the veterans who saved the country are now, in a way, not helping to save the country in this fiscal mess. Wow! So it's up to the veterans to balance the budget by just sucking it up and not collecting the benefits they desperately need to pay their medical costs? It's not up to the politicians. It's not up to you who already spent the money on the rich and on the wars. It's up to the veterans who fought those wars? I, I, I'm amazed by these people. How do they live at night and how do they sleep at night? So now you know what's ironic? Pretending you're for the troops when you want to start a war and then throwing the troops under the bus the minute you get a chance. It's also ironic to pretend it's their responsibility to balance the budget after you spent trillions on wars, you started, and that caused their disability in the first place. These people have no shame. One of the largest veteran groups in the country, Vote Vets, has called for Simpson's dismissal based on these comments, and they're right. Apparently, Senator Simpson cannot figure out how to balance the budget if he can't do it off the backs of the elderly, the disabled, or our veterans. So let me help him out. I like to be constructive. So here's one way we could have balanced the budget. We could have not gone into the senseless, absurd, counterproductive, insane war in Iraq. That would have saved us at least $709 billion so far. We would also save $160 billion every year going forward if we got out of Iraq and Afghanistan right now. Ironically, getting out of these wars would also save us much more of those disability payments to the veterans that Simpson seems to hate so much. Well, you might say that's in the past, but you think they're done? They're not done! The neocons and the defense contractors are like Bob. They never go away. It was a disaster, Faye! No, it wasn't. You were wonderful, you sweetie. You were fine, Dad. Yeah. Why'd you need to kick Bob out of the house? You think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Bill Murray, the perfect defense contractor there. <laughs> Interesting analogy. Look, but they're never gone. That's my point. The Afghanistan war is now surging. We're escalating that war. And you know what? There'll be one after that, and one after that. The defense industry and the politicians they buy will make all their money up front and then ask veterans to take cuts in their disability repayments later. Look, here's another suggestion for savings. How about we stop giving $45 billion in subsidies to the largest oil companies in the world? That's mental. They're making record profits and they're multinational corporations and we're robbing the American people of the $45 billion over the next 10 years to give them more money? But for Simpson, that's a bridge too far. Can't touch the oil companies. They're too powerful. You can only kick the powerless when they're down. Here's another suggestion. I keep busting you up all night long. How about we don't give the richest 2% of this country yet another enormous tax cut? 
If we just stop the Bush tax cuts for the top 2%, we would save $681 billion over the next 10 years. That would pay for a lot of disability benefits. No, that doesn't want to get cut. No, they don't want to cut that. No, they want to cut your benefits, whether it's Social Security or disability. That would slightly inconvenience Senator Simpson's rich friends. He has a better plan to take the money from you because you can't fight back. But luckily, we elected a Democratic president who was supposed to stand up to powerful interests in favor of us. So what has President Obama done about this? Well, first, he made Simpson co-chair of his deficit commission. In other words, he's the one that put Simpson in charge. Then when these statements started coming out, the president backed him up and said his job is safe. Of course it is. He hasn't offended Fox News or Andrew Breitbart. And President Obama's defenders scratch their heads and wonder why the people who voted for him might be disillusioned. When progressives in the administration get fired for the slightest offense to Fox News and conservatives, conservatives who want to cut Social Security and disability benefits to veterans get the full backing of the president, that might give you a clue. Tune in tomorrow when Alan Simpson kicks a puppy and pocket change Obama says the puppy had it coming.